I'm Mike Hitt here with Victor Chin to provide a brief introduction to this session in which we frame around the notion of knowledge synthesis. As we well know in our field, we've had an increasing amount of specialization in our research, and it has led to an increasing amount of knowledge, which is very positive. The specialization that has occurred may be represented by the 26 divisions in, and interest groups in the Academy of Management, each of which represents a major domain of research. But even within each of those, there are subdomains. For example, the SDR division represents the knowledge, of, or knowledge in the area of strategic management. And we look at the Strategic Management Society also focused on the knowledge base of strategic management. And it has 12 interest groups. And there are subdomains even within those interest groups. So there's a tremendous amount of specialization and knowledge that has been developed over the last many years. And we know developing specialized knowledge is intended to uh, help us understand complex social problems. But according to Don Hambrick, uh, one of the things we've been doing is reducing irreducible holes into incomplete answers. So we need integration. We need integration in order to accumulate knowledge, as Eleanor Rostrom argues. And we need that, especially in order to have a global point of view to create practical wisdom. And this is important for managers because management practice is designed to align pluralistic interests of multiple stakeholders, integrating conflicting values, logics, rationales, and perspectives. So there's a need for holistic thinking to solve complex managerial problems. So how do we handle this? How do we synthesize this? Well, there are probably many ways. We, in an article a couple of years ago, Victor and I made some recommendations. One is reinventing or inventing new technologies, such as intelligent assistance for researchers who can, uh, which, which can apply artificial intelligence to provide support for researchers, not replace them. Or inventing new outlets, such as a knowledge synthesis portal that was recommended a number of years ago, but in point of fact, it's a massive effort and something that could uh, needs to be done, but still will be very complex and challenging to uh, implement. And we also need to examine our incentives. Uh, we've had some very good incentives for pro tenure and promotion, but we need to broaden those and, and place more value on integrating knowledge uh, than we have in the past. And this would include emphasizing providing value for uh, the journals and outlets that integrate, such as the Academy Management Annals, annual review issues of JIBS and Journal of Management and uh, IJMR, uh, as well as others. I, I'm reminded of a uh, book that I read a few years ago in a particular passage, which talked about specialists that dug these holes searching for treasures. And they found these treasures in, as they dug, and they placed them up on top of the ground above their hole that they were digging. And they continued then to dig further, further and further and further. I look at that as researchers and developing more specialized and deeper knowledge. But we also had this uh, uh, someone that came around and gathered all of these treasures and put them together. And that's the integrator. And what we need now is this integration. I'll now turn this back over to Victor. So the purpose of this symposium is to explore a new blueprint of knowledge synthesis uh, in business and management. Uh, the problem we're trying to deal with is the accumulation of scientific knowledge uh, is difficult to implement in the absence of a convergent and integrated knowledge ecosystem. Uh, the current technologies, outlets, and incentives of business and management scholarship emphasize discipline-based reductionist research and are relatively incapable of solving complex social problems concerning uh, management. 
So the, the fundamental problem of the knowledge of fragmentation in the field of management is that we are in a science of organized complexity, a term uh, coined by a mathematician and uh, uh, former Rockefeller Foundation director uh, Warren Weaver in 1948. So the science of organized complexity is a field of knowledge that was born fragmented. Uh, it's a field in which pioneers from many different fields come together to explain a, a very complex social phenomenon. Unlike a traditional scientific discipline, where there's usually a shared foundational methodology or unquestioned assumption or, or theory uh, applied to explain different phenomena, the main of management is an open pluralistic field where uh, researchers uh, holding different assumptions uh, from different methodology backgrounds, uh, using different theoretical perspectives to explain a shared phenomenon by drawing and consolidating uh, the knowledge from other fields. Well, the hope of this open and a pluralistic society is to integrate uh, different theoretical foundations, methodologies into one place to uh, more fully explain management uh, problems. Uh, in reality, the current system is incentivizing or prioritizing uh, uh, reduced uh, discipline-based and reductionist approaches uh, to address subcomponents of management uh, in a piecewise manner. As a consequence, the literature, data, and the communities uh, of, for different aspects of management are becoming increasingly fragmented uh, into silos. Uh, it has become uh, exceedingly difficult to uh, develop a complete uh, frameworks uh, connecting all the knowledge silos uh, and the interconnectedness uh, across the silos uh, is poorly understood. And one risk we are facing as a field, in my view, is that we have uh, uh, more and more specialists who uh, understand more and more about less and less. And uh, uh, we have many fewer solutions uh, for the complex whole about management and organization. Each specialist is like a blind man touching the elephant uh, with incomplete and often biased view. Uh, and no one can see the full elephant. And more specifically, we have at least three sources of this fragmentation problem. The fragmented science, distributed data, and this connection between evidence and the practice. And in recent years, we have seen some very exciting uh, new initiatives trying to tackle the fragmentation issue uh, by experimenting with new infrastructures. Uh, especially technological infrastructures. One example uh, is very recently Kai Larson from University of Colorado and I uh, have uh, created a new Academy of Management Connect community. Uh, it's not officially announced yet, but we're going to set up this uh, new virtual community uh, at AOM soon. Founding members uh, came from uh, information systems management, uh, computer science, software engineering, AI, natural language processing, machine learning, uh, collective intelligence, uh, digital platforms, uh, to try to create uh, supportive tools to assist the human researchers to do knowledge integration uh, more effectively and more timely. And also Mike and I and a few other colleagues are uh, editing a special issue calling for papers uh, at the International Journal of Management Reviews to call for uh, unifying uh, ideas uh, for fragmented science of business concerning different stakeholders. Uh, we have the deadline for submitting a letter of inquiry by August 25th uh, this year. And today I'm so excited to introduce you some of the leaders in our field uh, who are leading the charge uh, of knowledge synthesis. So on the panel, we have uh, eight editors representing six elite review journals or elite journals uh, 
publishing review issues. First, we have uh, Stuart Bunderson and Carrie Elena, uh, editors of Academy of Management Annals. Uh, Frederick Markison, founding editor of Annual Review of Organizational Psychology and Organizational Behavior. Uh, we have uh, Beth Rose and uh, Ben Galvin, founding editors of a uh, relatively new journal, uh, Academy of Management Collections. Uh, Dermy Breslin, uh, co-editor-in-chief of International Journal of Management Reviews. Uh, Chris Rosen, uh, associate editor uh, for Journal of Management. And Alan Verbeke, editor-in-chief for Journal of International Business Studies. So here's the structure of, of this symposium. First, I will ask each editor to offer, to offer a five to six minutes opening uh, discussion. And then the rest of the symposium will be a interaction and Q&A uh, among the uh, editors and the audience. So I can't wait to hear what our editors have to say. Thanks very much, Victor. <clears throat> so uh, I've, I've outlined a number of issues that I think need to be considered uh, especially if one is continuing to uh, develop this, uh, this interesting project of integrating knowledge. Um, my specific uh, perspective is from uh, the creation of literature reviews to synthesize knowledge. Um, and I just want to share the screen with you. So, okay, so the, f the first series of questions I would have um, that I think are really important to take into consideration uh, as you design this project is what we mean by knowledge. Um, so first of all, there's the level of abstraction of that knowledge. So um, as outlined in the paper by uh, uh, Victor and, and colleagues, uh, there are different ways in which uh, theory can be presented. So that theory could be you know, specific to uh, an empirical problem or context. For example, it could be representative of a model or a framework, uh, but theory could also be more general in terms of approaches and grand narratives. Um, and the level of abstraction in the theory presents different types of problems if we're talking about synthesizing that theory in a literature review. Uh, the second refers to the research process. So um, if we think about the development of theory as a, as a struggle in which there are lots of interim steps that have to be taken from the sort of initial ideas and perspectives and approaches to sort of explorative pro, uh, studies and then more uh, empirically focused and replication studies, you can see that again, knowledge uh, and the contribution of that knowledge to development of theory uh, varies widely across the research process. And again, this is connected with the level of abstraction and, and depending on when, where that knowledge sits within the wider research project in a particular research domain, that presents different types of problems in terms of integrating that knowledge uh, together and into some sort of integrated framework. Uh, and the third point I'd like to make is ref with reference to interdisciplinary, sorry, disciplinary specific domains and research domains. So let's say, for example, we have a, you know, a phenomenon uh, that's a particular problem that practice, for example, are, are dealing with. Uh, and we have a number of different disciplinary domains looking at that problem. Now, there could be, for example, as we see in this figure here, domain C, D and E. There's a lots of overlap in terms of how they conceptualize and, and how they represent the problem. But it could be that that problem is interpreted in very different ways so that there isn't actually a lot of overlap between the domains. Uh, and again, that makes it difficult in terms of integrating the knowledge uh, across domains to, to come to, to develop a sort of integrated framework. So I'd say that in, in terms of the knowledge itself and how one conceptualizes it uh, in terms of level of ab abstraction, the stage of the research process in which that knowledge and theory has been developed, and different research domains. These present very different challenges in terms of how you would develop a system to integrate knowledge across domains. Uh, and the second point I'd like to make is in relation specifically to the literature review process. So let's say very general, very generally, uh, research review involves setting a research question, uh, doing the search and selection of the literature with, that would be appropriate for that research question, uh, then integrating and synthesizing the literature and finally presenting it through a written literature review. Now, there, there are a number of different approaches in which you can do this. You know, there are narrative reviews, integrative reviews, systematic literature reviews, meta-analysis, uh, and each of these approaches takes 
uh, a very different path through these different stages. But I would say that regardless of the approach that you take, the element of creativity uh, and the insight of the actual review scholars is a hugely important part in terms of synthesizing, integrating and interpreting that literature in order to come up with a unique contribution. Now this is, if we consider the three, uh, the three dimensions that I mentioned earlier of abstraction process and domains, they present real challenges in terms of how insight works and how you can you know, make connections between the literature as you integrate it. Uh, and, and the key challenge I would say in using the sort of supportive tools, and there are very sophisticated supportive tools that can definitely assist review scholars, is how you ensure that that human element, you know, that creative element in making those insights, those, those connections between the literature in different domains at different levels of abstraction, that that, that, is, that that is part of this integration process. In other words, to summarize, um, the, the, the overall narrative that I've seen so far about in, within this project is that it assumes a certain type of research in terms of level of abstraction, in terms of the, the overlap between domains and in terms of the stage of the research process. Um, how, how can that accommodate different understandings of those three dimensions? And most importantly, how can it accommodate the very important element of insight and creativity, which is a key part in the development of theory and most importantly, in the development of literature reviews. So those are the, the key points that I would like to raise. Thanks. Hey everyone, I'm Stuart Bunderson. Uh, Carrie, Leanna and I are co-editors at the Academy of Management Ales. We wanted to share a few thoughts about knowledge synthesis. The Greater Review evaluates the cumulative work within some domain of, in this case, management research in order to address a few questions. Um, an integrated review steps back from the proliferation of empirical or theoretical articles to ask, you know, what have we learned with confidence about the question that motivated all this research? What are we not asking? What questions are we not asking? Are there specific theoretical or methodological approaches that we're taking that are sort of uh, affecting what we're learning? And, and could we learn something more if we, if we changed? And how or where might future authors focus in order to advance our understanding uh, of these phenomena? That, that's an integrated review. An integrated review is not simply, therefore, a purely descriptive summary of the literature. It's not about just documenting uh, and counting up articles in diff on different uh, subjects or even um, uh, conducting a meta-analysis. It's stepping back and critically evaluating where we are and where we're not and what we need to do to move forward. Um, uh, an analyst piece is not an opinion piece. It's not an empirical research report or meta-analysis. It's also not a theory development piece, although theory is critical to what we do in annals. What we want our authors to do is sort of see the, the literature as their evidence base in conducting an inductive theory building exercise to tell us, okay, here's what we know. And here's a framework for helping us understand what we know that is generative and helps us uh, as we move forward. Uh, the review process at Annals is a little different. We have a two-stage submission process. First, authors will submit a five-page proposal that describes the manuscript they, they want to write. And those are double-blind reviewed. And we send those to two of our uh, associate editors who don't know who the author is. The authors don't know who they are. They review this, tell us what they think. We might go through a couple of iterations. If we accept a proposal, then it's no longer blind. We tell one of our associate editors who the authors are and ask them to work with those authors in developing their proposal into a manuscript. Think about the way knowledge synthesis evolves. It's motivated in management the way all research is motivated by some management problem. And this management problem will inspire some researchers to tackle that problem through either developing theory or conducting uh, empirical research or some combination. Often that fragments, uh, some people begin to study it one way, and so there's a stream of research that uh, is examining that problem here, and there's a, a stream too that's uh, addressing that problem here. Well, over time, as these two streams mature and you begin to get more uh, papers being published on that topic, um, that uh, stream one and stream two are each ripe for an integrated review, and so someone might step in and write a review like the ones I described a minute ago, where they say, well, here's what we know about stream one, and here's uh, what we don't know, and here are some things that might help us move forward. And then someone does the same thing with stream two. Now, here's the question. Once you've done that, 
where do you go next? I mean, you've already got an integrated review of that stream. Do you write another one? I mean, you could write another one that maybe says, yeah, but they didn't quite get it right. And, and you know, if, if you if you include these these articles or they overlook these articles, or you know, you could do that, but that's not really going to move the, the field forward. So where do you go once you have an integrated review on stream one and you have an integrated review on stream two? Well, I think there are two answers to this. And uh, the first is the answer that is, I think dominating in our field right now. The most common answer is, well, let's fragment those streams even further. Let's recognize, for example, that in stream one, there are some papers that are really adopting maybe this method or that are focusing on this sub problem or that use a different version or a different um, flavor of the underlying theory. And so we're gonna do a review of that um, substream. And then someone else might do another review of the other substream. And so what we get is greater fragmentation. We get an integrated review of stream 1A, and we get an integrated review of stream 1B, and the same with stream uh, 2A and 2B. Now, the, the effect of this is that rather than solving the problem and getting a, a, a more coherent and integrative picture of the underlying problem, what we're doing is we're actually uh, identifying ways that you can take that stream and pull it apart and fragment it. And so integrated reviews, rather than being perhaps as, as integrative as we would like, actually end up uh, achieving greater fragmentation in our field. So I think there's a better answer, and that is to step back rather than, rather than to, to identify the, the, um, the things that, that differentiate these papers. Let's recognize that all of these papers ultimately are addressing the same management phenomenon, the same management problem. And so rather than, uh, and, and now that we've stepped back and, and, and sort of done a summary of stream one and stream two, it seems like the next logical and natural step would be to, 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 to move to a higher level and integrate across those streams in a way that gives us an integrated review of the management problem that motivated all of those studies to begin with. So in other words, let's say the management problem is something about how individuals relate to their organizations. And we've got a stream on organizational commitment and a stream on, on identification and, and another one on person job fit and maybe something on involvement. Well, rather than taking those, doing integrated reviews of those and then splitting those out into sub um, uh, streams, what if we just did an integrated review on how people relate to their organizations that integrated across all of those various streams of research? That seems like a more productive way to go that's going to put pieces together. So this leads to a couple of questions on our minds as editors. How do we encourage researchers who are specialized in narrow research domains to tackle these cross-domain research integration problems? Because there are some barriers. There's a knowledge barrier. Researchers may lack the expertise they need to thoughtfully evaluate research outside of their core domain. And so they don't think they have the, the capability to do that. There's an incentive barrier. One is that researchers aren't rewarded for um, doing that sort of cross-domain work. Instead, they're rewarded for advancing the conversation within their uh, domain and within the community that studies that specific domain. There's another incentive barrier, and that's that promotion and tenure committees aren't sure what to do with papers that are published in integrated review journals because the review process in those journals and the standards are opaque and they're often inconsistent across uh, integrated review journals. So what are some solutions to this? One might be cross-domain collaborations, get uh, researchers from different domains together. Uh, we could benefit from clear standards of what constitutes a quality integrated review and transparency into that process. And that uh, is what led us at the Academy Management Annals to uh, implement a double-blind uh, proposal process so that we could um, uh, provide some assurance about the review process. These are just some solutions. There may be, there are others, and we'd love to talk about those. And so we look forward to that discussion. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Beth Rose, and my partner in crime here is Ben Galvin. We're the co-editors of a journal you've probably never heard of, but you definitely want to, because it fits in really well with this notion of synthesizing and integrating knowledge. It's the Academy of Management Collections. It's the journal is peer reviewed and each volume will be a collection of articles that have previously been published in the AOM archive. And, um, and so it'll be a thematic group of articles that ideally builds on and helps us to see things a bit differently and in terms of synthesizing knowledge. So each collection will be 
on the order of 10 to 20 articles from the AOM archive that's selected by a curating author or authors, and then that'll be tied together with an original essay. And so essentially, we think that this gives an opportunity for disseminating and synthesizing the large collection of articles that have been published by the Academy of Management over the years. So why do we need AMC? Well, the AOM journal stable consists of over 50,000 articles and very few of us can deal with all of them. And it makes it very difficult for someone who's not expert in the field to navigate this huge amount of knowledge and make sense of it. Uh, we view the each volume of AMC as kind of a PhD seminar, you know, the fodder for a PhD seminar, but with the curating essay as essentially giving you access to a subject matter expert. And ideally, this makes it this makes the the, the knowledge it synthesizes the knowledge more effectively for scholars and for practitioners, makes it much more accessible. And it gives us the opportunity to hear scholars' voices and perspectives, which we don't really do enough about. So over to Ben. So one of the metaphors that we've been really excited about as we think about synthesizing knowledge for collections uh, is this idea of the museum metaphor. And if you think about a museum, there's kind of what's on the walls publicly, but there's also this large archive of knowledge, or in the case of museums, generally art. Uh, that only the curators and maybe some you know, special individuals, maybe a scholar in a particular area of art, uh, really have access to or would have the expertise to navigate. And so what occurs in art is so that they can make it accessible to the public um, is that they have shows, museum shows, where the curator comes and puts together a collection. And probably all of us have, have been to a museum show, but as you uh, think about going to view a collection, let's say at the Whitney, uh, you would go and there'd be a, a introduction from the curator where they would kind of overview the topic and, and help you to understand what you would be looking for, maybe the history and, and starting to understand the themes that you'd be seeing. Um, then as a visitor, you have the opportunity to come and to read those things. Uh, maybe you even have the opportunity to walk through with the curator or to have some sort of a docent uh, kind of walk you through the collection. In the case of AMC collections, that would be the curator writing the original essay. But um, as you're able to then uh, visit this, have this experience, hopefully ideas would be sparked in you and you'd really leave in a very excited way. You'd come out of the show or after reading the collection and really want to have conversations with others who also are interested in the topic or who were able to, to have the experience as well. And then that that experience would then go on uh, and help you to then influence you in practice. Um, again, this is this exciting uh, way to really reconceptualize what we're doing as a field and this need for knowledge synthesis so that it doesn't just remain in an archive. Um, as we had the opportunity to really think about the implications for the academy um, as we've been working on the collections, uh, we think that some of the things that we've thought about really have relevance to the session today. And I'll just quickly go through some of those. The first thing is we really need more tools and infrastructure for really understanding the fragmented findings and the really nuance that's out there in the existing research. It's very, very complicated. You know, more accessible methods for really unpacking the connections. And this is one of the things that we think is one of the strong suits of collections, um, that oftentimes, you know, there's all this knowledge out there, but it's not really obvious what to take away from it without deep expertise and really time as well. You know, many of us spend months and even years, uh, you know, reviewing literature as I'm currently in the process of one of those myself. Um, in addition to that, uh, we have limited platforms to really access and collect unfiltered scholar and practitioner voices and knowledge. And so again, this is an opportunity that we're really excited about with collections is to have less filtering of the author's voices, but we need initial platforms for that out there. And we also need additional infrastructure to really connect the networks of scholars and practitioners actually living the phenomena. So, so many scholars out there, this is all they do. This is their life's work is really understanding a particular area. And there's practitioners as well. And so figuring out ways to really connect and to build infrastructure so that individuals can access that. Also more transparency on the state of the topic. Oftentimes, you know, there's the kind of what scholars are saying and then there's what's published and really making those things more transparent so that we can really push fields forward. You know, providing a deeper understanding of shortcomings and strengths of literatures. 
um, providing additional commentary from diverse voices and really preserving blind spots that are talked about in literatures. Again, as we start to consolidate and synthesize knowledge, there's the potential that the diversity really becomes uh, lost. And so that's something we're also very concerned about as Beth and I have been talking. Um, another thing obviously is this idea of making things more relevant and actionable. Again, when there's all these journal articles and we're, you're just looking at tables and, and things, uh, you know, it's often difficult to know. And we write these implications for practice, but oftentimes they're written very quickly kind of once we're done with the article. But really thinking about if we were being paid, you know, in a consulting situation, how would we synthesize the knowledge and then make that accessible for practitioners? And finally, more social infrastructure that really allows for the bridging of gaps between scholarship and practice. This is something obviously that we're, we're very, very concerned about is that, you know, we're a bunch of scholars talking to ourselves and we need to strengthen that bridge. And again, knowledge synthesis is one way to, to do that. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Frederick Morgison, Eli Bro Professor of Management. Welcome to our session and our discussion about knowledge synthesis. Happy to be here. Happy that you were able to come here. Looking forward to our conversation. Uh, we've been asked by Victor to share some kind of opening thoughts about knowledge synthesis. And so I thought I would uh, just take a couple of minutes to do that. I think one of the interesting things about the field of management is it for sure has been uh, maturing. And I think that the reality of most uh, domains when they mature, there's there's more research, there's there's more knowledge, it gets more complicated, it gets more nuanced, and typically it gets more narrow. And I think what happens when, when this occurs, it's in a way it's a good thing, but it also is sort of an interesting challenge. And, and it's challenging in the sense that the knowledge that gets produced tends to be more fragmented and, and often more dispersed because the, 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 the complete knowledge any single person holds is narrower. And I think the question comes up for us is what do we really know and what do we really know for sure? And uh, I, I don't know that we have a, a good answer to that. And as I see it, there's sort of four main problems. First is, is when people are entering a field, PhD students, uh, new, uh, new scholars into our domain, it becomes difficult for them to understand kind of the big picture, right? They, they see some trees, but they don't know what the forest looks like. They got a bunch of bricks, but, but what's the house look like? And so I think this contributes a little bit to the increasing narr narrowness of, of scholars in subsequent generations because they don't have a broad perspective to start with. It's difficult. It's not really a criticism. It's just a reality of our own success. The second piece here, uh, a problem as I see it, is that it becomes difficult for established scholars to really keep up. And so, um, you know, it's hard to know what all is going on in its totality and how it might impact what you're doing. And so I think what ends up happening naturally is people sort of not retreat so much, but they, they, they focus on their own specialty and that lends to this further narrowness. What's interesting about management is, is, you know, we exist as an applied domain and the application is to organizations. And it, it becomes, as these processes play out, it becomes increasingly difficult and maybe impossible for them to even understand and use our research. And kind of the last problem is related to that. Now, we often don't have answers to even the most basic kinds of questions that uh, organizations or managers might have. Um, if you've ever worked with organizations, they'll ask you a question, you go to the literature, look at it and say, I have no idea because there's no research that answers these kinds of questions. So the way I see it and why I'm excited about this session is we have this tremendous lack of integration in our field. And it, it really, there's this sort of clear need for giving attention to knowledge synthesis. And, and of course, some of this exists, right? Meta-analysis has been hugely important and influential in, in integrating knowledge for, for scientists that are working in a domain, but we really need to go beyond that. And I think from my perspective, uh, we want to try to think of knowledge synthesis as its own discipline and, and a topic worthy of consideration and study in its own right. And so a couple of things that I think we need to think about doing is, is how do we recognize this as a, as a significant, meaningful domain and pursuit in promotion, in journal publications, and so forth. It's sort of the methods component. Um, we're really good at publishing papers and whatnot on uh, statistical methods, but what about kind of this knowledge creation as almost like a method uh, topic in its own right? And then, and then secondly, focus more attention on how to better accumulate this knowledge. I know there's been a bunch of work in this space, uh, 
Of course, the challenge is always in the details of making it, of doing it and making it accessible and not sort of repeating the same errors that we have currently done. Hi, I'm Chris Rosen. I'm representing Journal of Management during this session today. As an associate editor, I have extensive experience editing and writing reviews. As you probably know, some of the most impactful papers published at Journal of Management are reviews, both reviews that appear in our annual review issue and reviews that appear in the regular issue of the journal. This is important because science is cumulative and reviews provide us with a tool for sorting things out on a given topic. So like most of you attending this session, I believe that reviews serve a very important purpose. Uh, also, this session is particularly interesting given recent advancements in technology and infrastructure that may facilitate the review process. So it's going to be a lot of fun to chat about these things with you all uh, once we get going later on. Victor asked us to share some ideas about how to improve or accelerate knowledge synthesis. Uh, so for this, I'm going to identify three topics of interest that I'm going to pose as questions. Um, I'm happy to elaborate on these during the session, but I'm hoping that we can have a discussion around them. Um, I'm, I'm an associate editor. I'm not an editor in chief. There are some wonderful editors in this session that might have some insight on these uh, or answers or solutions for these questions that I haven't thought about. But I, I think that some of these provide a good starting point for a discussion. So the first question is, how do we speed up the review process uh, while also maintaining scientific rigor? Um, at Journal of Management, it doesn't take long to go from the proposal to publication phase. The problem is that it takes years for a topic to accumulate enough research for it to be deemed worthy of a review. Um, editors and reviewers, we have a limited supply of them. And so it's hard to talk about how to accelerate the review process without adding more editors or reviewers or resources. Um, we could change the, the criteria for sending papers out for review and increase the number of desk rejects, et cetera, and that might speed things up a little bit, but I'm interested in hearing other people's ideas on this because I don't know, I, off the top of my head, it's hard to come up with solutions. I'm sure many people have thought about ways of accelerating the review process, um, but you know, I, I'm looking forward to chatting about it. The next question is, what is the best way to frame a review so as to maximize its impact? Um, so how do you convince others that a given review is necessary and important? So I, I bring this up because a lot of times I see authors selling the technology that they're using uh, as an uh, important contribution of their review. Uh, unfortunately, reviewers don't always buy into that. It's important to explain um, why your review is necessary and what its contributions are to the field. With that said, I think technology or artificial intelligence might be able to help us with this. They might be able to help us to uh, identify important research questions. So for those of you that are more involved in the, uh, with the technology side of things, I would like to uh, hear you guys talk about that. And then the third question is, what are some things we can do to create communities or infrastructure that will facilitate the process through which cumulative knowledge is reviewed and disseminated? Um, I know that the new AOM Connect community that we're going to talk about in this session is one step in that direction, and I think it's important. Um, recently, there was a, a model that I saw where uh, psychologists got together, teams of them internationally, to focus on uh, testing a specific phenomenon. and these large teams, they were able to do like 10 years worth of research in two years because they were coordinated. And then at the end, they reviewed their findings from many, many labs. So they were, in essence, able to address the first question I had, how do we speed up the review and publication process so that we can have information to review in our papers? And so I think that that's something worthy of talking about whether these are formal infrastructures or ones that occur more organically. The other issue is that um, in the US at least, our university incentive system doesn't necessarily support large authorship teams. So that might be a hurdle. Um, fortunately though, we have things like tenure that kind of offset some of those issues. So um, anyway, I, I think that's another topic that I would be interested in talking about with the, the panel during this session. So I'm looking forward to interacting with you all uh, during the upcoming session, and it's great to meet you all. Thank you. Dear colleagues, it is a great pleasure as editor-in-chief 
of uh, JIPS to share a few thoughts with you on the issue of knowledge synthesis and integration. I completely agree with uh, Mike Hitt and my colleagues who are editors that there has been tremendous uh, specialization in the broad fields of business and management and that this does not always lead to uh, only positive uh, outcomes. The incentives in business schools are really uh, stacked against uh, generalists and integrators. Uh, many of my own colleagues view integrators as the equivalent of clinical professors who actually do contribute value, but who are uh, hardly uh, research scientists. Uh, from my vantage point as editor-in-chief, I try to address the issue by having uh, two streams of articles in GIPS. Uh, first, the functionally specialized papers that need to meet the highest uh, quality threshold prevailing in the functional field, such as finance. And then uh, second, uh, papers that are often more provocative uh, and typically do not fit well in a specialized discipline, uh, but mostly do have some integrative uh, properties. We also, of course, have uh, review papers, and we typically want to see uh, insights displayed from different disciplines, as exemplified by the team of authors itself. But it is very, very difficult to write a compelling uh, proposal uh, that is more than just stating there are various perspectives or research streams on an issue. So in the GIPS editorial team, we do attach value to genuine attempts at integration rather than to virtue signaling about the need for integration. I think that those are two very different things. Um, now, this approach of having two streams of papers and then on top of that, uh, a number of review papers per year does not fully address, of course, um, uh, fragmentation and the need for shared platforms for knowledge integration. But I should say that I'm more optimistic than Victor and Mike, because I do think that overall and in the long run, especially the market of ideas leads to the best ideas floating uh, to the top and the best approaches ultimately uh, being adopted by increasingly larger numbers of um, scholars. Now, I do agree that uh, great ideas and great approaches to research uh, deserve a platform. I think that um, uh, great ideas and great research approaches uh, typically highlights and bring to the forefront what I would call regularities. Uh, this is really about predictive capacity, uh, but taking into account that any uh, individual management study will by necessity need to be somewhat uh, reductionist. Uh, take the case of transaction cost economics. I think that if we want to achieve integration uh, in that field of uh, research and potentially build a knowledge platform, uh, we must obviously have a repository of all prior studies that have uh, applied DCE. And in this instance, the usefulness of the platform is really about how contextual uh, variables can affect the regularities uh, that have been observed. It is also about, I think, uh, weeding out um, poorly designed or poorly executed uh, studies from the platform. I think that we tend to underestimate somewhat the importance of weeding out uh, bad studies or studies that simply don't meet the standards of 2021. Uh, it's really similar to eliminating all the, for example, fake anti-vaccine and anti-fluoridation studies in the field of population health. Uh, but in contrast to population uh, health, we really don't have um, any uh, curators, we just have um, editors and we have uh, their teams of um, editorial review board members who um, have to deal with this uh, curating. And here is a great paradox because um, the curating efforts of um, uh, reviewers typically 
are not geared towards more knowledge synthesis, more knowledge integration, more knowledge accumulation. Uh, reviewers really are very often uh, risk averse. Uh, so it is then the role of the editor uh, to basically take risks and to um, be willing to uh, really see the diamond in the rough and to see how this diamond potentially fits into an existing set of diamonds, uh, which can then lead to an improvement of the, uh, of the field. Um, let me finish with uh, a very small, perhaps, but actionable uh, proposal towards making some real progress um, on this issue of uh, platforms. Uh, most good journals now want a final section in all articles with implications uh, for future research and implications uh, for managerial practice. And we could also systematically ask authors how they would propose to design or build or, or simply contribute to an existing or, or desirable uh, knowledge platform for knowledge accumulation and integration uh, through uh, their uh, study as kind of a starting point or as one element uh, in that platform. So my view is that we should try to work on this bottom up rather than top down if, if we're really serious about uh, knowledge platforms and using these platforms for um, knowledge uh, integration, synthesis, accumulation, etc. Thank you very much.